morning youtubers <clears throat> i have only my uh macbook pro desktop in the back <clears throat> the uh <clears throat> famous mountains there i don't know the protocol if you want to climb that stuff how much permission you need it would seem like it'd be pretty pockmarked with like climbing we have a smith rock out here where people come and i'm talking about tourism a bit today and i will boot a browser but uh, right now my head is big and uh, we're going to talk about map and this globalism versus nationalism which i write about a lot especially on medium some recently and have blogged about it extensively so i come to new I, I come newly to youtube to reiterate reiterate a lot of things but it's good to hear hear it as a story i find the youtube medium is more storytelling than ever and more accessible to at least um well a different audience we like an audiobook sometimes so you can even now sometimes i'll correct mistakes but i'll do it um visually like i'll do little talk balloons and stuff so if you only hear this on audiobook and you hear me saying i'm going to fix something or address something could be I do that, but I don't ever do it in the narrative, right? So I just wanted to let you know some quirks about my methods and style. Uh, regarding nationalism, see, I want to explain, because I do talk about Buckminster Fuller all the time, I do want to explain his popularity with the youth of, I'd say, people older than myself, like the boomers. I'm like a big, at the edge of the boomers. So I'm like a post-boomer of some kind. I'm not claiming there's a lost generation, nothing like that. We'll just say I'm a boomer. But a lot of older siblings, let's say my older brothers and sisters, they were the true Woodstock hippies, discovered rock music, psychedelics, and all that, the counterculture. And this is still talked about, I would say, in somewhat hushed tones. I'm not saying there's any censorship going on about that there was the 60s and that that has meaning, whatever, but what was the meaning? That way, I don't think we finished processing the 60s, in other words. And therefore, we still fight a lot of the same battles. You hear a very dressed up, prim looking corporate, I would say corporate looking people talking about the establishment on YouTube now. But they're wearing suits and ties and beautiful, you know, business clothes. And to me, and they're on YouTube, it all looks very establishment to me. So that's kind of the fun of it now. For me, having lived this long, to see all the flips that go on. How karma is more like a swirling vortex of uh, rapids with its eddies and turnarounds. And you're in this kayak or whatever they call that thing. Um, what? Um, you know, what are they going to think of next, I guess you could say. And I'm referring right now in local politics to say how much the so-called left, what they call the left, has so-called embraced the state police. By that, I mean the, the, quote, secret police, right? The equivalent of the KGB now is the darling of the uh, left, which is totally backwards, right? And then, I don't know, and the left is also very scared of Russia in a way that we used to associate as the hippies. That was an old, kind of old fart McCarthyism, you could call it, Nixon. These are the old people. And now the young people sound like our grandparents. That's very interesting, isn't it? Um... So John Denver, again, going way back, and I'm, I'm not a someone has listened to a huge amount of John Denver because the genre, I wasn't listening to that. I was listening to, um, what, uh, we'll get it. We'll get King Crimson some, uh, of course I listen to the very pop stuff. I'm not a huge audiophile compared to so many, but anyway, I do love music. John Denver, great guy. I guess a lot of us will remember him from he got involved, I, I believe, with the Hunger Project and the Werner Earhart, right? But he was a Bucky guy, too, and one of his albums had all this stuff. So fold out. He's a, I'm, I would consider him um, like fellow faculty in this sense, right? He was like, a, this is what they meant by a disciple. But I can get 
you know, the world for him and for a lot of, when you're born and you're young, you're thinking in my lifetime, we might see like prosperity. It's like you're playing a board game and this is just when you're being dealt in, they're dealing your, your cards and you're new to the planet. And that's like just sitting down to play this game. They're dealing you in and you get to look at your cards and it's like, I don't know, is this a winning hand? Maybe you've got some optimism there. Uh, and then as time goes on and you trade your cards around, it's like war in Sarajevo. And I remember what I called Yugoslavia in my youth and toured, very fun and prosperous place. I didn't get to where John Denver did, but wasn't there a Winter Olympics or something in Sarajevo? And then just years later, the place is being bombed from the air in Europe. And we thought as boomers, that we were done with that in Europe, at least. Like, Europe had gotten beyond where you could aerial bomb, you know, a part of Europe. So soon after World War II, after all those years of peace, we had taken that for granted. And we were just trying to stop any similar activity anywhere else. By we, I mean this generation I'm talking about. And I think this is where I'll end. Yes, the hippies in that sense were newly globalistic. And that was their idealism. They wanted humans to survive because that's the way Bucky talked. And he, a very old guy, like born in the 1800s, albeit at the end of them, but still by 1960s, he has that elder atmosphere about him. He's one from the old times. And he would go to big like hippie rallies, I'll put it that way, and be a darling there because he... um legitimized and justified how they felt about like the Vietnam War. It's like if humanity is trying to survive and you're thinking in those global terms and you see all these self-inflicted wounds, it's like the Vietnam War is like slitting your wrist or something. It's like we call them not weapons of mass destruction, but weapons of mass suicide, right? It's when humans attack themselves. So that's how it feels when you're a globalist and you're you're kind of like a humanist, right? And that's that became a bad thing for a lot of Christians. And being anti-nationalist is not necessarily the same thing as a globalist because once you're a globalist, it's not like we need to get to that world where there. Oh, I remember where I wanted to go with this. Ah, just occurs to me. Anyway, I'm winding up. Uh, you can be there in an instant in a world where nations have to be imagined into existence. They don't exist, obviously. There is no none of that. It's in our heads, as we say. We go through our day in a chosen dream of, yeah, I'm an American, I'm a Russian, I'm a Chinese person, and, you know, I'm a citizen of this country. It's very elaborate, huge history, big karma. I'm not saying any way to just, like, end that, like, that. talk about a freight train. That thing's boom, big track, right? That's a Mahayana kind of way of thinking nationalism. It's a big religion. I'm not here to stop it. No way. I'm not going to get in front of that one. But on the other hand, it's easy to see you can get off the train yourself. And you can just watch people flying by in their nationalist personas. But then it's always like that. Humans are trapped in being some character. Like in a cartoon, you want to be Snagglepuss? Well, I don't know. I don't know. How about uh, Barney Flintstone? I'm <laughs> right. So you get, you know, you're born. You get the card. Actually, they hand you the card. You're Barney Flintstone this lifetime. I don't know. It's, it's not your choice, really. Anyway, maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. So I'm talking about the fuller projection. And I'm into virtual nations. So I'm into helping more people brand as nations if they would like. Like you're Kurdistani or you're Tibetan. I'm all for perpetuating your national identity. And it can be in cyberspace with campuses. You know, we can have facilities. Sorry about that monitor. We can have facilities all over the world as, say, Tibetans and not get anybody all riled up because of contiguous landmass dominance. You know, you have to like just live in crowded apartments with people of other ethnicities. And yeah, sometimes you have retreats and you go to where everybody can ski really well or everybody loves really spicy food or whatever, you know, Venn diagram. You can go on retreats and be with quote your people in different ways that you didn't even know they were your people. People will love science fiction, right? We have conferences all the time. 
and we don't have to say they're racist or whatever. It's like you want to have Ancestry.com DNA people of a certain kind. You have DNA X1214C on the chain 12. Come on down. You know, free beer for you. That's not really discriminatory given time. You got to see that there's tons of these events and everybody gets into lots of Venn diagrams. So I'm saying there's no harm in, doesn't have to be harm in, I am not you or your group is different from my group and I'm not in your country and you're not in my country. And even if we're living next to each other in a third country, we're still from, make sure we remember from different countries. Okay, so there's all that, different families, different tribes within a country. You need those distinctions. Boundaries, I am not that because you aren't that. As far as your persona goes, you got to have a character. And I'm saying you don't necessarily want to identify as, right, X. And that's part of your freedom of speech and blah, blah, blah. So I'm not for, like, the United States and all it stands for vanishing overnight in some way, but I am for realizing the truth of the matter, which is that human imagination has proved very malleable over the centuries. Looking back at history, I have no great confidence that humans will want to keep thinking the way they think in order to pursue the American values of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. In other words, to become more American, you could say. To become more the essence of what we consider an American, we had to stop being such Americans in certain ways. We had to do it differently. And I could see, but that's not any one person's choice to make happen. It's just looking at history. Yeah, there's kind of twists going on. So hope we have a good rest of your day. And we'll be talking again soon. Hope someday you'll join us And the world will live as one